Hi, I'm James Aiken. Today I'm going to be showing you how I do split axles. My method needs a lathe and I use a milling machine to cut a slot in the back of the wheel. Sandy Harper has an alternative method where he cuts some slots in the Slater's axle, puts some glue in in order that he can then separate the two halves of the axle without actually moving, removing one end from the other. The first thing to do is to prepare a couple of strips of metal. I've used a couple of bits of um, scrap etch, about six inches long, and these are going to be used to line up the, the wheels on the axle. In the centre are two holes. One is big enough to go around the crank pin and the other one just big enough to go around the screw that sits in the centre of the wheel. I drill these after I've soldered the two strips together to make sure that they've lined up properly and the holes are lined up as well. What you then do is fit the piece of metal to each wheel with the hole that goes around the crank pin in the right place and the screw in place reasonably tight. And what you'll see, if you line the two up, you'll see quite clearly that the crank pins are not at 90 degrees to each other. With a careful inspection of the square hole in the centre of the Slater's wheel, I can see that that does not line up perfectly with the crank pin. So you have a choice at this point. You either decide that you're going to split all the axles of the locomotive or if you want to keep one of the axles um, whole so that that will take the motor you can just put the wheels back after you've split them into this orientation. So one technique is to make sure you photograph this to make sure that you've got you can reproduce that angle. Now dismantle the wheel and axle and mark the centre of the axle. And now cut through the axle. I use just a junior axle. Now take the first half of your axle, pop it into the lathe. I'm using a uni Unimat 4, which is nice and true. And then face off the front of the axle. You can take a reasonable amount of material off because you want to have a bit of a gap between the two halves of the axle when they're reassembled. The next task is to bring in the tailstock with a centre drill. This is used to give an initial hole to make sure that the drill, when it drills the hole through the axle, is um, on centre. Now change the drill for the smallest. An initial drill, I use a 2.1mm. This will go through the and not damage the screw thread at the, uh, at the square end of the axle. Once the small drill has passed right the way through the axle, then change it for a 3.4mm drill. This will only be taken into the axle as far as the end of the screw thread. This is about 8mm, perhaps 8.5mm. 
same to the other half axle and you now have your two half axles with a nice hole drilled up the centre of it. And now for the insulating plug. The next step is to turn an insulating plug from a piece of tough knob. The first thing to do is to face off the piece of tough knob. And then we need to reduce the diameter slightly. The axle diameter is 4.7 millimeters, so we just need to take the outside of the tough knob down to that dimension. We've now turned that down to the correct dimension for the outside diameter of the axle. We now need to produce the little peg, turning that down to 3.4 millimeters to fit inside the drilled axle. You need to be a little bit careful when turning this kind of material because it will bend away from the cutting tool. So always measure at the point nearest to the chuck. So we now have this, a nicely stepped piece of tough knoll. What we're going to do now is to cut the tough knoll to the correct length and then pop the turned piece back into the chuck and turn the other end. We now have the three components of the axle, the two cut halves drilled and the tough knoll brush sitting in between. We can assemble them and then just check that the back to back is correct. So here we can insert the tough knoll into the two ends, orient the two flats correctly and check with the gauge and we can see that's coming out 29.05 which is slightly less than the 29.2 back to back but that gives a little bit of room for a little bit of glue so that's ideal. I've reassembled the wheels onto their half axles and the metal strip as well. The two are ready to go together. I'm going to use some two part epoxy adhesive to glue the two halves together. You don't need very much of the glue. That needs a good mix to make sure that the hardener and the resin mix together well. So I'll give that a good old mix up. And once done, we can apply the glue to all the surfaces all the way around the pegs of our tough knoll. I can pop one end, pop it in with a, a screwing around motion to make sure that the glue is spread nicely inside the tube that you've created by drilling the two, the half. That good push too. 
and then apply glue to the other side. All the way around. Push the other part. Again, make sure you're doing it with a screwing up motion to bring the two halves completely together. Okay, and now we just need to align it. And to do this, I have these three components. These are just pieces of metal bar that have been put in the lathe and turned to exactly 292 millimeters between the two end faces. And they will sit between the wheels. So, squeeze them between the wheels, spaced evenly around the rims. Sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to get them in so that they keep the two wheel rims completely parallel as you can see there. And this is where you need to compare your setup here against your photograph that you took earlier and I can see that the two bars, the two strips of metal should not be parallel with each other as the little spaces drop out put those back in and then it's a case of clamping the whole assembly together using a clamp such as this. That's a very old clamp but it seems to do the job and it seems to work well. Sometimes it's best to get it all in place and then put the spaces back in again afterwards. And there you have it. Two wheels with the axle glued back together the two strips of metal misaligned in exactly the same way as they were when we were when the axle was in one piece and with the spaces ensuring that the back to back is exactly 29.2 in order for the split axles to work properly of course the wheel rim and the wheel center need to be shorted out to do that I insert a wire between the two and to make space for the wire I use a milling machine with a small cutter, this is a 1.5mm diameter cutter, to cut a slot in the back of the wheel. You need to go a little way into the rim itself, into the steel, and a little way into the brass centre, just to make sure that you've got something to solder to. Now that isn't quite far enough, so I'm going to just do it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. 
these wheels are for a WD locomotive it's always best to try and align the slot that you cut with the back of a spoke you can clean it up afterwards with a knife and once you've soldered the wire in painted it black you can't see it and you won't see it from the front either I've cleaned up the back of the wheel now just using a, a knife just taking the edges off and I've got some half mil diameter nickel silver here which would be absolutely fine all we need to do is simply cut that to the right size to fit in the slot there we go that's one and second Solder ready. I'm using an ordinary electrical solder here. A little bit of flux. Disgraceful, disgusting flux. And then apply the solder. I'll show you plenty of heat in there. Okay, now clean the back of the wheel. We can use a meter, such as this one here, to show that we do have a short between the centre. You can hear that beep and the other wheel as well. So having insulated the axle and uninsulated the wheels, the next part is to keep the horn block insulated from the frames and for that purpose I use a small piece a very very thin double slided copper clad this is actually 0.4 of a millimeter thick as you can see very very thin and what I do is I will cut to fit behind the horn block there a u-shaped piece out of the double-sided copper clad and then solder that on to the back of the horn block that in turn is then soldered on the inside of the frames thus insulating the horn block the bearing and the frames from each other the insulated horn block shape is now soldered onto the back of the horn block it's critical at all stages to make sure that that is electrically sound and that there is no short between this face, the outer face of the PCB and the horn block itself. And finally there is the horn block fitted in the side frames of the locomotive that is now fully insulated from the side frames. And now returning to the wheels that we put together we can now see that I've taken off the strips of metal uh, reattached the wheels to the axle and now we can check to see whether the wheel tyres are actually shorted to the axle as they should be. Very simply we'll put the probe on one tyre and on its equivalent axle touch the other tyre nothing, check the other tyre and it's half of the axle and there you are. And now to demonstrate that the wheels are running true we can simply roll that on the work surface Whoa, it's out of sight and you can see that it's running nicely. So that concludes my take on split axles.
I hope you found that useful.